Hello and welcome to a video in which I would like to introduce you to a little robot called Bumper and a physical maze challenge. Now, here is our little robot and you'll see it looks like a ball and there is a physics simulation of this robot that is modelled by, well it's a 2D physics simulation, so a, a circular object with mass. Technically, it's um, approximated uh, as a shape with 25 sides, but it's pretty close to a circle. And these walls are also physically simulated. And so if you run into them, you'll run into them. It's not just a picture that you can drive over. Uh, because we're getting a little bit closer to the physics simulation as well, uh, there's not inbuilt a turn left or turn right function. Instead, we have stuff to set the power of the left motor and to set the power of the right motor. So here, and I've kind of tried to show them here, is uh, if you can imagine a bit like Sphero, wheels inside the ball uh, that are going to make the ball roll or turn. And so we've got one on the left and we've got one on the right. And uh, when we power it, you'll see that there'll be little indicators to show uh, whether it's powered in the forwards direction or in the backwards direction. So let me show that. Let me go set left power of one full speed forwards set right power of one full speed forwards and we should see the two little green indicators go on and we should see it start zooming in this direction and there it zooms and it hits the wall and you can see it is still trying to drive into that wall so th those indicators are still on the motors still running that might become clearer if i just power the left motor and we'll drive it into this wall and you see it drives into that wall and it's still trying to drive itself somewhere and bang it's now driven over into uh, the outside wall over here uh, or likewise I could uh, just power the right motor and that would steer it into this thing and bang there it is and it's trying to drive itself along the wall now. Those motors they can run forwards or backwards so let me go set left power to minus one, set right power to minus one, and now we should go full speed backwards and hit the wall on the left. Bang, hit the wall on the left. Or if we wanted to start spinning, I could set one of them backwards and one of them forwards. And now that is gonna spin roughly in place uh, in the anti-clockwise direction, uh, or I could spin roughly in place in a clockwise direction. I don't have to set those just to one or minus one. It's in the range, minus one to one. So I could, for instance, set the right power to one, the left power to 0 0.7, and I'll probably end up hitting the wall somewhere over here. And bang, there we go. We hit the wall uh, just there because we had more power to the right motor than to the left motor, and so we, we steered to the left. Uh, okay, so this is our robot, and it's in a physical little maze. And eventually, the thing you're going to do is get this robot to be able to solve these mazes. Um, but, well, there's some things that we like to be able to do before that, because, you know, before we can deal with the idea of actually getting it to explore the maze and find its way all around and find that there's a route there or that there's a route here. Some of these mazes have more than one route to the middle. Um, before we can do that, we need to be able to do things that are just like, well, just turn to this square and move into it. Uh, because at the moment, all we've got is set left power and set right power. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need to do some control of this robot. So that's what I'm going to start showing you in this video. Uh, now, this robot, fortunately, has a few sensors. One of them you've already seen. That little blue thing at the front, that is a bump detector. There is a flag inside the robot that remembers if it's hit a bump and we can clear it uh, using a um, function called clear collision. And so that will clear our collision flag and then we can ask, is collision detected? So let me set it going forwards like that and let me clear that code and then, then let me say while true and let me go print learn is collision detects it and so this is going to start off printing false and then it'll hit the wall and it'll start printing true so it prints false hits the wall and let's just clear this so we can see what it's printing now now it's printing true while that is red so that is my little collision detector 
All right, we're going to need that eventually as we're trying to spot where walls are because we're going to spot them by running into them. But we need to know where we are. Fortunately, Bumper has some really good sensors for its own position. It's if like got you know a fabulous internal compass and superb uh, maze GPS. And so there are functions in here for get x and get y that will give the um, uh, that, that will give this uh, robot's current x and y position. And so let, I tell you what, let's set that going forwards. And let's just keep printing out and get x. And so we should see it. Uh, its x position changes. It runs along here. Now, these tiles are 64 pixels wide and it starts off at position 32, 32. So we're not going to see 0, 0. We'll, we'll work out uh, which tile we're in shortly. But for the moment, um, let's just go with the actual the actual position. And we can see it goes from 32, bang, over there. And if I scroll down here, you can see that it's been increasing all the way until it's hit that wall and it is just sticking at 624.35 because it's hit the wall and is traveling no further. Uh, let's reset that and start printing out the Y position. Well, the Y position shouldn't change much because we're just making it go forward. So that should stay at uh, 32. And uh, yep, 32 all the way. And at the end, well, deviated a little bit from the impact with the wall. So it's now at 31.957, uh, but pretty close to 32. All right, what about its heading? Well, its heading at the moment should be uh, zero. So that's this direction. And so, yep, heading is zero and it hits the wall and it might deviate a little. Yeah, it deviated by a tiny amount. So it's uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 15 or whatever uh, it, it, its angle, but it's still pretty much heading in that direction. Um, okay, what about its uh, velocity in the X direction? So we should see this start growing and then level off and then drop to almost nothing. And so it goes from zero and it starts growing one, two, three, four, five, uh, three, sorry. And then something really small, 1.1 times 10 to the minus 13. Uh, so it, it kind of thinks it's going very slowly that way. But of course, the wall's stop it, stopping it actually from doing so. Uh, these numbers come straight out of the underlying physics simulation. Uh, OK, so that was its x velocity. Uh, I tell you what, let us do the thing with angular velocity. And this should end up saying zero because we're not turning yet. And so, yeah, zero, bang, hits the wall. And OK, it had a small amount of angular velocity, something times 10 to the minus 21 just from the impact. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, it's not turning anywhere because we told it just to go straight forwards. So we've got some pretty good internal sensors. The next thing I need to mention, though, uh, is that angles in this are measured in radians. So uh, if you've not come across radians before, in degrees, a circle goes from zero to 360 degrees. Radians, they work the same, they're just a different scale. If you can imagine, you know, inches instead of centimeters, yards instead of meters, same idea. Um, but in this case, radians go from zero up to a number which is two times the constant pi. Uh, you know how a circle has uh, its circumference is two pi r? Well, there's two pi radians in that circle. Um, and so it is, it is a, a measure of uh, angle with respect uh, with respect to pi. Uh, so zero to two times uh, pi. So pi is three point one point one four one five. So two times pi is about six point three. So you go from zero here uh, around this way to coming back um, six point three. You know two times pi uh, is there, which is a bit like in degrees. You go from zero round to three sixty. So if we want to convert between them, it's just a matter of multiplying and dividing by constants. Why use radians? Well, the reason for using radians is because most programming languages, including JavaScript, their trigonometry functions use radians. And so we'll use the ones that we can just put into the into the like into the language's trig functions and they'll work. However, there's another funny little complication. Uh, well, it's not a complication. It actually makes things slightly easier, but it, it's an oddity I should show you. Um, and that is that if we set this thing spinning, 
it's heading uh let's go forwards it's it's uh sorry go to the right and so it's heading would go zero up to two pi and then jump down to zero and so it would have this sudden jump down as it crosses uh this um as it crosses the axis the, the as it crosses the x-axis that can be a little bit of a pain that jump for if you're wanting to try and work out if you need to turn left or turn right to adjust your heading and so the underlying physics simulation it happens to let you go 0 to 2 pi to 4 pi to 6 pi to 8 pi and kind of just keep going same negative you could go to minus 2 pi minus 4 pi minus 6 pi and just keep going so let's show you what i mean there and it's so it's it's an oddity but when you do the coding you won't normally need to worry about it uh, so let's go while true uh, and let us just go print learn of get heading and so let us make it turn clockwise and so let's let set the left one forward and the right one backwards and say so that should spin us clockwise and our angle should go positively upwards so from zero and you can see we go up but we go past six and a bit past 12 and a bit and so it keeps winding upwards because it's 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 like it's remembering how many loops it's done which normally a compass wouldn't do but we, we've just let this one do it uh, or if i wanted to go in the other direction um, then well we'd see it going negative but again it's going to let us wind past minus two times math uh, dot pi and kind of keep winding uh, it won't matter to us because when we put these things into trigonometry functions where we need to or where the physics simulation does uh it'll work it out uh, but it does just mean that, that, that there doesn't become that sudden jump where you were turning right and your angle was getting bigger until you're turning right and your angle suddenly gets a lot smaller so it sort of takes out that discontinuity